Well, hello everybody and welcome to Joe's Barbecue House. Here I want to show you a little up close review on all the mods that I have done to the Weber Kettle and the Weber Smoky Mountain. Let's get to it. Okay, let's start out with the Weber Smoky Mountain. Now all I did here, as you can see, is I added a River Country uh, gauge here. It's not focusing in there. Sorry about that, guys. So anyway, got a River Country gauge, got the Cajun Bandit steel door, also the Cajun Bandit legs there for the bottom base, and those are the casters that I had added to this thing. Uh, I bought this thing approximately six years ago, and, mod and the gauge, the stock gauge went out, so I had to replace it. Works great too, but nothing too fancy, you know, just your normal Weber Smoky Mountain. Then over here, oh, actually, you can see here, I also have the hinge lid on there. That thing is a must. Okay, coming over here to the Weber kettle. As you can see, it's not stock by no means. So what I had done to this thing here is I added a second lid right here, okay? And this helps for even distri distribution of heat throughout the whole kettle and works excellent and freezing temperatures. So here you'll see that that is that smoke that fire ring there you see is part of the the Smoky Cajun Bandit smoker kit for the Weber kettle, which we'll be getting to that here soon. Now here's a setup here. It's an, an extra center section of the WSM, and here where the grommet goes, I install it. <clears throat> excuse me, installed uh, another River Country gauge. And I acquired another, a, a brand new lid here, which also installed the River Country gauge and did the dual vent mod here as well. It's not really hard to do. All I did was took the stock gauge that, that, that's in here and I pulled it out. Very simple to do. And all you got to do is uh, pop the vent, the new vent down, the bolt will fit right in and just drill your holes out. Just mask it off with tape, you know, with the vent off. Uh, center your holes. You can place this on and then center your holes, drill a pilot hole, and get a step down bit and go ahead and drill your holes and then go ahead and, sorry, my phone was going off. Uh, and just go ahead and install it and you'll be good to go. Now, what we want to do here is going to go ahead and disassemble this. I don't use this too much, but I'm going to show you after a while how this section here will fit on the Weber kettle. So I'm going to go ahead and lift this off. I'm going to set this aside over here. Now what we're going to do is set this baby up with the extended racks. Here you'll see is a Cajun band and extended, extended ring. And I just took some wire, metal wire, and just kind of, it's real thin gauge wire, and I just did it to mount the, um, the, the coal grate on there so it won't come loose. We'll set that in there like that. This here is a Cajun banded. This is the uh, smoke ring attachment you could buy. I showed you the fire ring that was in there. That was part of this. So all we're gonna do is take the center section. We're gonna set it up on here like so. We're gonna grab our water pan. It's in this thing here, hold on. We're going to set this in here. Now keep in mind, I do foil line the inside of this. Uh, it acts as a grease catcher and all that. I don't put sand. I don't use no water. I found that the Weber Smoky Mountain works best as a dry pan. Then we'll take this attachment here. We'll set it up on here like so, and it fits right in the ring, and just give it a good tug. And there you go. And this is what it looks like with the lid. Very cool. I know you guys saw that in my other videos. So I'm going to show you a little bit on how the racks work. So here, you will see that I have three middle sections. These are Weber grates that I ordered on Amazon. Um, there was a hardware store on there I got them from. 
Well, these three racks are gonna go in the center section. And how you set that up is you first gotta set the bottom rack in like that. We're gonna take the second rack, install it in here like so. Okay, and the third rack, just like so. All right, everybody, and this is what we got. The three racks installed. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the five rack. You see five racks here? Now this has a bottom, the stock grate that sits on the top here, the original 22 grate, and these four here are the, the Weber Smoky Mountains bottom grates. And they just sit right like that. Now you guys saw this in other videos. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the ring. It just fits, and if you notice here, these had brackets here that you could set a grate on top when it come from uh, Cajun Bandit. Well, I had to take them off so I could use all these. So this ring will fit perfectly on here with plenty of room because I used those four smaller uh, cooking grates. And there you go, just pop it on. And you are ready to go. All right, here I'm just going to give you a close-up on what it looks like all together. Go ahead and lift the lid. You can see how it comes up a little higher than the lip there, but it's not too big of a deal. So, you guys are probably wondering, I'll go ahead and talk about it now while I got the camera here. But you guys see these nuts and bolts? It's all 5 sixteenths hardware. It's really nothing to do. All it is, is if you're doing this for your Weber kettle, you'll want to use it uh, three inch bolts. It's all 5 16 hardware. These are, I'm sorry, these are three and a half inch bolts right here. And all they do is run on the bottom, as you can see here. I can't get it to focus, sorry guys. I don't know if you can see that. But there's a washer there. A washer on top so you'll need a total of eight washers to start your bottom rack and you see i tighten it down with a nut that's a 5 16 nut and get this style nut here guys you see how that looks right there don't look like i got enough lighting here well anyway i think you guys get the hint and then just you know set them off to the ends here and keep in mind that these are the cheap 20 dollar amazon grates okay these are the ones where the, the, see where the bars are right here? They're actually wider than the uh, original Weber's. So, but these are only 20 bucks, so you get what you pay for. They're kind of cheap grates, but you know what? I, to do this mod, I wanted to, I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money because I wanted to make sure it was going to work. So, coming back to the, the nuts here and the bolts and the washers, all 5 16s hardware, it's common sense on how to put this together. It's not very difficult. Um, and use three and a half inch works best for the Weber kettle. You could get by with four inch, uh, but, and you can, and it's, and it's adjustable. So all you gotta do is run the nuts up. And if you need higher, you need more space in between, you can. Just like over here. Let's go ahead and get you guys a, Look on the inside, I don't think you can see in there very well. Okay, but wait, there's more. There's something I've done that I haven't shown yet because I just put it together. I haven't even tested it yet, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna work good on this Cajun Smoky Bandit. Let me show you. So here, I'm gonna take the lid off. Pop this ring off. Take the racks off.
take these racks out. I'm gonna go ahead and put these over here real quick, guys. Sorry, it's freezing out here. It's like 20 degrees or something. My fingers are freezing. I probably should have a hat on, but it's okay, it's worth it. I want you guys to see what I did over here. Now check this baby out right here. Whoa, no, that's not a foosball table. This is, well, what I did is I converted the Weber Smoky Mountain to be a meat hanger or a barrel cooker, whatever you want to call it. And all I did was took the rot Cajun banded rotisserie ring and I drilled two extra holes on each side of where the spit rod goes in, where the motor mount goes. Now this ring can be flipped to use on the Weber kettle or the Smoky Mountain. So all I got to do is come over here, set the ring in, yeah, we'll set it this way here. and she's ready to go. All right, we're back. So here, as you can see, I didn't bring my hooks out here, but here you'll see I have uh, three half inch rods, just had to drill two extra holes. Now keep in mind, this is stainless steel and this is really tough to drill through. So uh, I had to take it to a machine shop. They charged me 25 bucks to drill the four holes, which I already had started. That's fine though, but they got them to fit perfect the way I wanted them and here, Sorry if you guys are picking up that wind noise. I bought some uh, half inch collars. And these, all you need is an Allen key right here. Just pop it off. You can run your rods out, not a big deal. Now the problem, or the reason why I did it this way is because I have a bunch of kids under, in this house, under this household. And all it would take is one time for a kid to bump into that grill or you know, something happens where I might do it. I might have a couple, you know, too many beers or something and my coat might snag it or something, push the meat right back in there. That's the one thing I didn't like about the pit barrel cookers or, you know, not just saying them or any of them, but the ones that has, you know, the rods that go through and there's nothing to prevent them from, you know, from them sliding. No, I don't, I just couldn't, I don't think I could have that here at this house. Uh, I'd be too afraid that something will happen when the dogs will bump in it or something and, uh, you know, not the rod on the inside. Now, I'm sure it's because they have that rebar. This is flat. So the rebar would make it kind of tough for that to, you know, uh, fall out. But just in case, that's why I went with these collars. And it's, all I have to do is take off these three and slide them out. Not a big deal. So there's that. And all I got to do. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't use this lid on here. I have to use the Smoky Mountain lid. So let me disassemble this. And this goes on like so. And there you have it. My version of a barrel cooker. So what do you guys think? Now I would put the hinge lid, you know, buy another hinge lid and put a hinge lid on the backside, but I don't want this ring popping off. There's no point in doing that. It's not a big deal just to lift this off here. So I like the fact that you know, I had plenty of ventilation on the top. I would always leave this top vent closed. So when that meat and I run it without the, the water pan, hold on, let me get, let me get it zoomed back out here. Okay. Sorry about that guys. I'm just one person here. It's pretty cold out and I don't normally step in front of the camera like this. So, uh, as you can see, I usually do my voiceovers either way. So What's nice about it is I like the fact that if I had to plug these holes, all I would need is the stuff that would aluminum foil. That's all right. That'd be enough to block it. I do got to test it out. I got to season these half inch rods, which I'm going to do soon and do a test. But I'd like to hear your thoughts. Comment below what you think about this. Uh, the new addition I did to the Weber Smoky Mountain converted it into a barrel cooker. What else would I like to say about this? 
oh, okay, but that's not all. So let's say that you're the type that likes to go camping, but you don't want to bring that big old thing right there, right? You just need something to cook on. And you don't want to bring your, your Weber kettle because of the leg's so long, you don't want to break it down. Well, here's something I'm going to show you. I'm sure this is not new to some of you, but to those that don't know, might be a good thing for you. So, and this is what I did. I went camping with my kids. We went to the Badlands. We had a bunch of nice big four wheelers and stuff. And we like to go mudding and all that. And, uh, which by the way, I sold my four wheeler because wait till you guys see the smoker, mobile smoker that I'm having built. One minute here. So let's go ahead and move this out the way. Okay. Now you want to go camping. All you got to do is take this out. Now, this fire ring that comes from Cajun Bandit is, this extended fire ring is too big for what I would be using it for. But now that Weber, uh, now you can use a standard like the grate in there so if you could charcoal grill in here. But what we're going to do here is take the fire ring that come from the Cajun banded Weber uh, smoky kit, you know, the smoker kit. And we're gonna set this in here like this, okay? Now all you gotta do is light one side and you, you have the option to use the stacked grate. Hold on guys. You can use a stack grate or you could just use one grate. And you could set it down in here like so. And there you go. Then you can do your indirect cooking, anything you want to do, or sear, or whatever. Now, you want to turn it into a little mini smoker. Yeah, not a big deal at all. What you do is you take the 18 inch diffuser pan, or it's a pizza pan actually, it's an 18 inch pizza pan. And just, I just line the outside, or the, you know, the outside with foil. And the inside, I like to keep bare as possible because I don't like the heat hitting the aluminum, you know, the fire directly on that aluminum. So I'll do it like this and just light your coals in the center right here. Okay. Take your diffuser pan, set it right over the top. Then you could take your dual rack system, set it right on top of there, set your great and you could here you could smoke it on the top or the bottom or i would prefer just having your meat up on the top but you could do the bottom if you'd like i've done many cooks with this same setup in the weber kettle so then you want to take your oh uh, you can't use the stock lid that came with the wsm for this it will not work you probably could get it but it'll sit on there if it's windy it'll probably blow up but don't do it get yourself a kettle grill it doesn't have to have the mod like i did you know the extra gauge just get you your kettle if you had a, a Weber 22 inch kettle, just set it right on the top and it fits perfect. So now there you have yourself a mini grill portable and lots of room to cook on. So here you go. Portable, low to the ground, not too bad. Take the lid off, show you guys the inside. Now again, you can adjust those racks at any height you'd like at any time. You can cook just on the top, you can cook on the bottom and the top. You don't even need a dual rack system. Just put your grate on the top that comes from your Weber kettle or the one that comes from your um, uh, Smoky Mountain. That's all you need. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and move over to the Weber kettle here. So what we're gonna do, and I'm just gonna go ahead and disassemble this, take the rack off, I'm going to take this fire ring, put it back in here, take this fire ring, put that there. Now there's one thing I did not check to see if it would work or not, is seeing if this smoker ring, yeah, look at that, okay, look at that. Kind of nice, huh? Look at that multi-cooker. Uh, but you still, I guess you could use the four stack or even the uh, three stack to put in here. Yeah, I don't know. I might have to try working with that one day. 
But between Cajun Bandit and Weber, my God, it's amazing all the combinations that you could do with these cookers. It just, it's unbelievable. Okay, so there's that. Let me go ahead and get this back together. Okay, everybody. So let's talk about the Weber kettle, okay? This has got to be the best mod I've ever done. As you can see, I did it to this slit here as well. Oh, and let me mention here as well, when I'm cooking, I'm, I'm sure some of you guys saw in some of my videos where I could have it 25 degrees hotter down here and 25 degrees cooler up here or vice versa. Sorry if half my head's cut off. Anyway, here, what we're gonna do is show you how I use the Weber kettle. Now you can take, let me show you first. Now we can go ahead and take these off real quick, okay? Let me show you that this thing, because it's reversible, just pull these rods out and I could flip this and still use it as a rotisserie on the Weber kettle. And all that has to be done is just take these Allen keys out, or the just loosen up the Allen screws. Pop these off. Put them down there. And just take your rods out. Simple as that. Flip this baby over. And I already have my bracket here for the motor. Set it down there, you install your motor, run your spit rod through, and you're rotisserie. Just as simple as that. And it doesn't matter what the holes here, as far as too much you know, air ventilation. And the reason for that is because when you're rotisserie, you're not doing low and slow. You're doing, you know, you're at higher temps when you're rotisserie around like three, 300, 350 degrees, even sometimes 400, all depends on what you're rotisserie. And you can use, uh, this fire ring here, let me go ahead and disassemble this. And you can use the fire ring that came with the smoke kit, the Cajun Bandit smoke kit I showed you earlier, with this ring here, this fire ring, and this 18 inch pan. And what I normally do with this is I'll light my fire in the center, and I use this and put it right over the top, just like that. And it makes for the coolest, like, smoke effect you know you get a lot of smoke flavor doing it this way and by the way ken over at heavy metal barbecue is the one that showed me this so let me go ahead and show you dual rack mod place it right here and with your lid now, i know you guys saw me do this uh, use this thing a lot in my videos and also in my group at joe's barbecue house if you guys are interested in Join in my group, I'll let you in. I'll do just a little pre-scan on you, just see you know, you're not there to troll or not. Uh, it's a drama-free group. I'd appreciate if you guys stepped on down. And But anyway, so there's that. So another thing I'd like to mention, for those of you that have a WSM, and you wanna be different, you can use this same setup here and take your center section and just pop it on over here. I don't recommend using the ring. It just makes it too tall. I actually stand about as tall as I am and I'm 6'1". So this isn't too bad of a height. This is actually very nice. It's sturdy. I wouldn't worry about it falling over. Everything's fine. I've done many cooks. Actually, I've done 65 pounds of meat alone in one cook just on this. Maybe I'll try to do the iCard and get a video linked if you guys haven't seen it. So. Let's see here, what was I gonna say? Okay, so just for, let's, let me just grab this here. Here's a center section from the original WSM. All you gotta do, set it on like so. And I see this is getting kind of tall here, but it's fine. Still got the hinge lid, it's, it's sturdy. I wouldn't worry about it falling. And all you would need, which is the Water, you can use a water pan if you like. You don't have to use this diffuser plate if you don't like. 
um, and then just put the water pan in there and let it act as a diffuser. Or you could just put this down in there. So there you have it, guys. It's amazing what you could do with Weber products if you own a 22-inch Weber Smoky Mountain and a Weber kettle. Also, from uh, Unknown Barbecue, they make these hinged for the Smoky Mountain and the Weber kettle. Just make sure you get the right one. The one that's on the Weber, well, the one that I have, the, the one that you just saw me put on the, uh, the Weber there when I stacked it on top, that one has, that's the one for the uh, Smoky Mountain lid. They're different for the Weber lids. It's more wider here or whatever. But these are heavy duty. I've been using them for years. But I bought this one brand new. And you'll get a bag of bolts, nuts and bolts there, with lock, lock nuts and all that. And what's really cool about them is you could, so you can see this here pin, you pull this pin, you can just take your lid right off. So it's not permanent on there. It's stainless steel, it's heavy duty, very nicely constructed. I am glad I found this product here. And I believe I got this on Amazon, if I'm not mistaken, but it's from Unknown Barbecue. And eventually, I'm going to mount this on this Weber kettle. Just haven't had the time to do it yet. So, hey guys, that's pretty much all I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, you know, like I said, comment below what you think about these mods. And again, I'm sorry, I'm just, it's cold out here. Normally you guys know I don't jump in front of the camera. I usually do my voiceovers and stuff. But hey, if you like what you saw, please subscribe. Like this video if you learned anything. And share to your friends. Thank you and have a great day.